Agent 47 and Diana Burnwood are the world's top assassins working for the ICA. Unknowingly, they have been hired by a shadow client to target a number of operatives of Providence, a secret organization working in the highest echelons of power. Providence's controller, the Constant, approaches Diana and makes her a deal. Eliminate the shadow client and learn about 47's past. But when 47 discovers that the shadow client is Lucas Gray, his lost childhood friend, he and Diana switch sides to fulfill an old pact. Destroy Providence. Together, they manage to capture the Constant, forcing him to reveal the identities of the three Providence partners. Eliminate them, and the war would be over. However, the Constant has an ace up his sleeve. Look closer. In the shadows. Behind the everyday world. Beyond the headlines and the seats of power. A hidden hand. A kind of company known as Providence. To it, we were just assets to use and throw away, to do the unthinkable, the unforgivable, and it never gave us a second thought until now. After decades in the shadows, we are fighting back. Me and 47. Much has been lost, but we are closer than ever. We trapped the Constant, Providence's chief controller, and finally learned the names of its three partners. In their downfall, we lay the past to rest. And just maybe, look towards the future. 37, it's time. Partners are down there. You know, I never planned this far ahead. You never do. I see someone got his memory back. Wait, is that a beacon? <laughs> what the hell? Base. Alexa Carlisle's helicopter just took off. Confirm target locations, over. Diana, what's the status? Right. We have a situation. Carlisle has left the building. And I think I know why. The Constant has escaped. He persuaded one of the sailors into setting him free. And since then, he's been seizing control of Providence assets and resources. I can only assume Carlisle is rushing to contain the damage. If she slips away again... We'll keep track of her. Make sure she doesn't. Meanwhile, the plan stays the same. Your destination is the Scepter, the world's tallest building where the partners are laying low, courtesy of their host, Sheikh Omar al-Ghazali. Marcus Stuyvesant is fifth generation old money. His family made its fortune in real estate and banking and were at one point the chief landowners in New York. Carl Ingram is a powerful Washington kingmaker whose family grew rich selling gunpowder during the American Civil War and later established a globe-spanning empire in oil, coal, and steel. Both families long since retreated from public view, but their quiet dominance endures to this day. Now, the partners likely suspect that we're coming, so Mr. Gray will infiltrate building controls and disable all electronic doors and elevators. Stuyvesant and Ingram are about to find they have nowhere left to run. Right. This is our moment. 
1947. Providence ruined our lives with the flick of a pen. Today, we return the favor. Happy hunting. Welcome to Dubai, 47. Today is the inauguration of the Scepter, and the ceremony is well underway. You will find Marcus Stuyvesant near the building's signature art installation. While a paranoid Carl Ingram has ensconced himself in his penthouse suite, security on highest alert. Mr. Gray is already in position and ready to assist. Good luck, 47. Do you copy? I'm here. Are you in position? I'm heading towards the point of entry. Good. Get back to me when you're there. Mm, locked. 47, use your camera and scan the lock, will you? I think I can override the window's controls from here. I'm in position. 47, the inauguration is taking place close by. Once you've infiltrated it, get your bearings. I'm sure there must be floor plans somewhere. Understood. We need absolute focus on this one. If Ingram and Stuyvesant are alerted to our presence, we may lose them for good. We are so close, 47. Don't worry. They're not going anywhere. Welcome to the Baj Al Ghazali. Probably still down at the deep end, getting his uniform. I just hope he's got his papers with him. I heard rumors that he used to work for that Dawood Rangan. You know, the Bollywood producer who died? Doesn't sound promising. <laughs> no, it doesn't. Fixin, fixin, fixin. Six thousand dollars for something you're just gonna walk on all day? What is that? Well, did she leave the price tag on? Oh, <laughs> no. My wife sent me a link as a joke, and now all I see online are ads for these fucking shoes. There should be a box you can check when you're just cringe browsing, you know? Nah, no way. Ads like that are the best part of the internet. Where do you think I got my This Security Professional Loves His Cavalier King Charles Spaniel shirt? Yeah, that's a... Uh, that's a pretty good shirt.
I think I can open that window remotely. Scan the lock with your camera and I'll have a try. 47. I would like to address the Providence partners directly. I want them to know why this is happening. And I have an idea, but it requires you finding a map, Taman. is also out there looking but this is awful i mean i'm in my boxers and you are a woman it's just so embarrassing oh it's nothing i haven't seen before but you don't understand i'm military we military men are used to punctuality i i was supposed to be ready and present my papers half an hour ago yes you men in the army with your papers super punctual i get it yes are you making fun of me that's so cruel. Do you do you know what a man is without his gun? <laughs> man in his boxes, crying like a baby. Ugh, you women will never understand. <laughs> and I don't think we ever will. be my new escort. I have very high standards and trust you will do your duty. You have your credentials on you? Mm, let me see here. Yes, that looks good. Oh, I like it. A cutlery expert, no less. I have no idea what that means. But your CV is very impressive. This looks perfect. Come on. Let's walk. Need to tell you a bit about what I expect from you. I expect you to be by my side 24-7, unless I say otherwise. Bathroom breaks are, of course, permitted, but only when I say so. I have a very important, delicate meeting today, at which I expect you to keep your ears closed, but your eyes wide open. Understood? Now. Your papers were indeed impressive, but I need to see what you can do with my own eyes. My father used to take me hunting. He was an avid hunter. I personally hated it, but always admired his skill with a knife, and grew to appreciate what it takes to gut an animal. Have you ever tried to gut an animal? Yes. Good. Then you know it's not so easy as it looks. Like trying to stab a rubber ball bounces back if you don't stab it correctly. You're almost here. You have to understand, I didn't get where I am by blind faith. Okay, we are almost there. You see the shooting targets? Any fool can shoot a target. But with a knife? No. <laughs> That's where the talent lies. My father always used to say, if you are good with a knife, you're even better with a gun. I want to see your skills. I don't know why, but I've always trusted a man who would throw a knife. <laughs> I'm sure a psychiatrist would have a field day with that statement. So, show me what you got. You do well and you work for me. Fail, you get out of here. I want to see your face again. It's just always half as good as you are. Only time will tell. What I know. You cocky idiot. Yeah, it 
Oh, it's a magnificent performance. I like you. I think we will get along just fine. You've okay. gained his trust. I think I got the right man now. What to do Thank you for all your service. that power. I'll take the rest of the day off. You deserve it. Thank you, sir. It was an honor. Thank you, sir. You impressed me. You really did. But let's get to work. Some things you should know about me, and this is very much on a need-to-know basis. I am here incognito. Whoa! You got him, 47. Marcus Stuyvesant won't be a problem anymore. Let's move on to Carl Ingram. We're not done yet. Just a precaution. I've been personally invited by the Royal Highness Omar Al Ghazali. I should have clearance. The name is Zaina Kazim. Sir, I understand. But you can't enter without being searched. It's standard procedure. This is ridiculous. Well, that's how it is. Think about it and come back if you want. I'll be waiting upstairs in the reception. Understood? Crystal. I just need to do a quick routine check if you want to get through. Nothing to worry about. It's simple protocol, sir. Green light. Go ahead, sir. Oh, Mr. Kazim. I'm glad you changed your mind. Arrogance can be a dangerous train. Yes, indeed, it can. Mr. Ingram has been expecting you. We have a conference room set up for you. How you been? yourself comfortable. Mr. Ingram will be with you shortly. Thank you. Have a seat, Mr. Kazim. I'll get straight to the point. I have a, well, let's call it a dispute, which the Royal Highness tells me you're very capable of taking care of. Now, I've worked with your organization before, in Morocco, I believe, so I'm a little hesitant. Don't be. We do what's needed. Well, only time will tell. I have two assignments for you. Take care of the first one, and then we can discuss the bigger fish. Now, on to the first. An acute problem has been brought to my attention. Keep talking. I'll be candid with you. 
No one is supposed to know that I'm here. However, there's a journalist down at the inauguration, and he's asking rather intrusive questions about who's staying up here, and that is a very dangerous problem for me. Now, I want you to silence this little pain. You think you can do that? It's what I do best. I like your bluntness. This is his file. Hans looked. Pulitzer winning freelance journalist. He's good, and won't give up until he gets the answers he needs. And that can't happen. Consider it done. Good man. And remember, I want a picture. I want proof so I can sleep tonight. Of course. Once this little assignment is completed, come back and talk to Miss Toe. Then we can discuss the real cancer that needs to be removed. I'm sure you can see yourself out. Mr. Look, I hear you're looking for information. Oh, really? Okay. You know what's happening upstairs? I know more than you could imagine. But we can't talk here. Follow me. Great. Lead the way. Hello there. Plenty of places where we could talk. I hope it's worth it. Wait for me here. I'll be back as soon as possible. Yes, that's it. Now Ingram trusts you, it's like shooting fish in a barrel. Hey there, big guy. Have a lovely day. Mr. Kazim, welcome back. So, you have the picture? Yes, here. Good. Our guest will be delighted. Please follow me. He's waiting. Mr. Kazim, please, follow me. Hey, how you doing? So, do you like the building? This has been His Royal Highness's dream. I think for even longer than I have known him. of its kind on this scale. It was important for him to look to the future. Patronage is the lifeblood of the arts. That's never going to change. A patron can withdraw their funding on a much more arbitrary basis than a public fund. That's all. I just think if society gave readers... I hope you have had time to see the art exhibition. His Royal Highness has a keen eye for the arts. If you haven't yet, I highly recommend it.
Here we are. Mr. Ingram is expecting you. Mr. Cassie, so good to see you. You have the picture? Yes. Your problem is fixed. <laughs> Omar said you were good. Let's get down to the important business at hand. Okay, people, clear the room. I need to discuss some delicate business with Mr. Kazim. I'm sorry. Uh, we have Ingram me right where we want him. Yeah, just remembered something. 47, you know, you know what to do. Have a drink, see the view. It's something to behold. Soon there will be no more providence. And you need to find an exit. Our business is done here, but it's far from over. Has Mr. Ingram left? Then please, Mr. Cassini. That's your winning face. I'd hate to see you lose. We underestimated the constant. Yeah, he's a glorified desk clerk. He's not just after the money. He wants it all. We caught him once. We can do it again. And, well, we're not the ones who let him escape. You still don't trust her. I don't like executive decision makers. Look. You don't have to follow her, you know? Soon, this will be over. Maybe it's time to think about the future. You have to face the possibility that there's no going back. If the ICA knows what you did... She'll make it right. She always does. We have a fix on Carlisle. Come on. We've got a plane to catch. I hope you like the rain, 47. Miss Burnwood. How did you... I have everyone's number. You really ought to know by now. You planned this. All of it. Don't be silly. I just played the hand I was dealt. We'll find you. You had me. Where'd that get you? We handed you an empire. It's for the best. The partners were complacent, set in their ways. But power is more than just security. Providence can be an agent of change. Surely you understand. Or you will. Soon enough.
she came home. Carlisle's lost an empire. You fall hard enough, and you tend to be reminded of what truly matters. So, the end of the line. You ready for this? Are you? Who will you be without a score to settle? <laughs> I guess the world's most wanted fugitive will have to do. Alexa Carlisle is dead. According to the funeral invitation, that is. So naturally, it caused quite a stir when the late matriarch turned up at the breakfast table, alive and kicking. Carlisle, wisely sensing that her number is up, has emerged from exile to tie up loose ends and secure the Carlisle legacy. She may be a monster, but you have to admire her due diligence. Carlisle descends from an ancient line of warrior aristocrats. Her great-grandfather made a killing in the Second Opium War and established an empire in shipping, railroads, and newspaper publishing. While largely unknown to the public, the family still asserts its quiet dominance over global transport and logistics, media, and technology. Most senior of the partners, Alexa Carlisle, is cold as ice, tough as nails, and sharp as a razor. Incidentally, it was her late father who first brought the three families together after the end of World War II at this very house, meaning that this gentleman is the birthplace of Providence. It began here, and it ends here. Talk about poetic. One more thing. According to our intel, Carlisle keeps a case file on the constant, information that may be helpful in his recapture, so don't leave the estate without it. Right. Happy hunting, 47. See you on the other side. Thornbridge Manor. The Carlisle family's home for countless generations. The revenant Alexa Carlisle and her three adult children, younger brother Zachary, grandson and daughter-in-law, are all gathered to conduct Carlisle's sham funeral. Curiously, Carlisle summoned a famous London PI soon after arriving this morning, but his purpose at Thornbridge is yet unclear. Now, the target knows that you're coming, and her guard detail is top-notch. So Mr. Gray will secure their nearby field HQ and intercept all calls going in and out of the estate. Any appeal for backup is going to fall on very deaf ears. Good luck, gentlemen. Phineas Whitmer, private investigator. I have an appointment with Madame Carlyle. Please wait. Mr. Whitmer is here to see Madame Carlyle. You can go right in. That is Phineas Whitmer. The famous private investigator hired by Madame Carlyle this morning. I'm curious why he's here. Maybe you should do some detecting yourself, 47. Mr. Whitmer, thank God you're here. Can I take you to Madame Carlyle? Please do. If you'd follow me. I know I oughtn't say anything, but I need you're here. Everything's just so strange. Preparing for Madame's funeral, and then she turns up alive. But then the awful business with her brother Zachary, and, and all this security. I've never seen a place guarded like this, and 
and, and I dare say I don't like it at all. Oh, by the way, I told Kate about those texts. What did she say? Well, I thought she'd be mad at me, but she just thanked me. Said she understood the position this is what I, I was in. Uh, you have to be patted down before you see it. Madame Carlyle inside. Oh, what did I tell you? Oh, I She's a sensible cry. woman. And that stuff from your ex was like manipulation 101. I know, I know. So I, I just I need to check. That's a bit excessive, I think, considering yeah, the I fact that, that, that I spotted no less than two routes to get inside the house unseen. We know what we're doing, sir. Don't worry about that. Mr. Whitmer, thank you for coming on such short notice. A great tragedy has fallen upon us, and I need a quick resolution handled with absolute discretion. Results and discretion are my speciality. Very well. I suppose you will want to start at the crime scene. In my experience, a thorough examination of a potential crime scene is half the job done. Good. Fernsby will take over from here. I am Mr. Fernsby, the butler. Madam Carlyle has asked me to assist you in any way possible. Mr. Whitmer, I understand that you've traveled from London. Would you care for some refreshments? Or do you prefer to go straight to Mr. Zachary's sleeping quarters? I prefer to get started. As you wish. If you'll follow me, sir. I feel obliged to point out that current affairs surrounding Madame Carlyle are of a delicate nature. You may be familiar with the recent announcement of her death. You will probably learn that a staged funeral is scheduled to take place tomorrow. Madame's children were not informed until this morning that their mother was in fact not dead at all. So please bear with them if they seem affected by the rather unusual situation. I trust I do not need to remind you that there will be consequences if word gets out that Madame Carlyle is still alive. I'll consider her dead when I leave. Before you inspect the crime scene, I will tell you this. The case concerns the death of Mr. Zachary, Madame Carlyle's younger brother. He was found dead in his bed this morning. The door was locked from the inside, and a suicide letter was found in his room. However, Madame Carlyle suspects foul play and will not accept that he took his own life. I've prepared some information for you, so please do come and see me when you've finished your investigation of the crime scene. This is Mr. Zachary's room, to my right. A locked room murder mystery, 47. I trust you'll get to the bottom of this. Zachary's suicide note. Also, a sample of handwriting. It could be relevant to compare to other samples to establish its authenticity. Zachary was shopping for New Wellingtons last night. Not exactly what you would expect from someone suicidal. Why don't you use your camera to scan the dead body, 47? Throat markings indicate a rare, short-lived plant poison killed him. Spread shows time of death at around 10 o'clock last night. You do know your poisons, 47. A 
hidden door. It's a secret passage. This could explain how the door was locked from the inside. Hmm. A photocopy of the floor plans. Somebody's been researching the secret ins and outs of Thornbridge Manor. I believe you've done a thorough search of the crime scene, 47. Maybe it's time to see the butler. I'm curious about the information he's prepared for you. Mr. Fernsby, I'm done with the crime scene. Did you establish a time of death? Zachary died around 10 o'clock last night. Well, that means the staff were off duty. And Madame Carlyle and her security didn't arrive until this morning. That leaves Madame's family and myself as the only persons here when he died. And before you ask, no, I do not have an alibi. I was alone in my office at the time of death. Here's the material that I prepared for you. It's a list of the possible suspects and their quarters. Hopefully that will help you keep track of your findings. Please come and see me when you've solved the case, and I will take you to Madame Carlyle. This is very useful information, 47. So how does one solve a murder mystery, 47? Motive, means, and opportunity, I believe. May I suggest you ask the suspects for alibis? Or perhaps you prefer searching the manor for clues first? Emma Carla, can you tell me where you were yesterday evening? Surely I'm not a suspect. I need to account for everyone. Well, I spent the evening with my family, but I got an awful migraine and had to take to bed. Everyone can attest to that. I believe I went up when the boys sat down for a drink around 8 o'clock. Anything else you want to know? How did you feel about Zachary? I might as well be honest. His presence was always awkward. How do you have a meaningful conversation with a man who only cares about plants? In my opinion, Alexa bears some responsibility for how this ended. She supported his self-limiting behavior by letting him live here. Is that all? Have you noticed anything else out of the ordinary? Nothing special comes to mind. Except, perhaps, I did get a feeling that Zachary was depressed, not just sad. I suppose he realized that he had no one with Alexa gone. Even Alexa must feel the pangs of guilt over that one, letting him believe she was dead. Then again, guilt isn't her strong suit. That is the door to Mr. Fernsby's office. Painkillers. Lethal if you use enough of them. But not the poison used to kill Zachary. Of course, Madame Carlyle doesn't know that. Are you considering to frame the butler, 47? Zachary's diary. This is big. He was about to confess to the world that he and Alexa murdered their older brother, Montgomery, 46 years ago. And apparently, Mr. Fernsby helped make the murder look like an accident. And 47, the handwriting doesn't match the suicide letter in his room, proving he didn't write it himself. That door leads to Emma and Gregory's room. Mr. Fernsby clearly didn't commit the murder, but I think you have enough evidence to convince Madame Carlyle he did. Maybe you should tell him you are ready to present your findings. Now, this is interesting, 47. A letter from Emma's mother stating that Emma is the illegitimate child of Alexa's late older brother, Montgomery. And listen to this. She claims to have witnessed Alexa and Zachary murder him. 
the plot thickens. A keychain pendant for the greenhouse. What's that doing in Emma and Gregory's room, I wonder? And why is the key missing? to look good for the family portrait. I can feel that pressure too. Excuse me? Would you mind looking into what that was? Like it was recently used, though. This is a table showing you have lethal uncovered dosages enough for the to tell Madame Carlyle that Zachary. Emma is the murderer. Quite the detective, 47. I'm impressed. Something is circled, 47. Female, age 65 to 79, 60 to 64 kilograms. I'd say Madame Carla is next in line for a poisoning. I suggest you go tell Mr. Fernsby. Unless you think there are more secrets to uncover. I am ready to present my conclusion to Madame Carlyle. Very well, if you'll follow me, sir. Madam Carlyle's office. Please step inside. So, Mr. Whitmer, you've reached a conclusion. Take a seat. Please, go ahead. Your niece 
Emmer Carlisle murdered your brother, Zachary. My niece? Emma is not my niece. She's my daughter-in-law. And your niece. Emma is the illegitimate child of your late older brother, Montgomery, who you and Zachary killed 46 years ago. That's preposterous. You asked me to find out what happened to Zachary. Would you rather not know? No. No, go on. I found a letter from Emmer's mother, Jane, who was the fiance of your older brother at the time of his death. She witnessed how you and Zachary pushed him off the balcony. She believed you did it to steal the Carlisle Empire from her and her unborn child. And she raised Emmer to reclaim what she lost, marry your heir, Gregory, get revenge, and secure the Carlisle Empire for her bloodline generations to come. Emma is the daughter of Montgomery and that local girl, Jane. She is. Well, the girl got it wrong. I didn't steal anything. I did what was necessary to protect the future of the Carlisles. Montgomery wasn't cut out to take over from father. All heart and no balls. Emma used the funeral gathering to speed up her installment as the lady of the house, seizing the opportunity to stage Zachary's suicide. She did her homework, used a poison made from one of Zachary's rare plants, found old floor plans from Thornbridge Manor to gain access to his room through a secret passage. That scheming bitch. More than you think. I found proof that she will try to poison you next. Well, I'll have to take care of that. Thank you, Mr. Whitmer. You have not disappointed. I promised you I would reward you generously if you solved the case. So, what do you suggest? I want the file you have on Arthur Edwards. Edwards, the constant. But how do you... Oh, I see. I expected you might show up. But to kill me, not help me. But I've been wrong on so many things lately, so why not this one? I will give you the file on Edwards. You've earned it. I don't suppose I could convince you to deal with my daughter-in-law now you're here. I would like to see her dead. No? What a shame. I'll have to see to it some other way, then. I need some privacy. Thank you. Good work, 47. That's the file on Arthur Edwards secured. Time to take care of Madame Carlyle. Huh? <laughs> Mission complete. Well done, 47. Copy. Understood. Containing and setting up perimeter. Out.
respond, just listen. Diana can't help you now. You need to find Olivia. She will know what to do. <laughs> I wish there had been more time. And then there were none. Thank you, Miss Burnwood. Now, it's my turn. Stay down. Boss wants you alive. Yeah? How about now? Over here! Cover me! Walk away! <laughs> or what? You gonna take us all on? Don't. Yeah! Tell the Constant to start running! You think you've won? 47 is out there. And 47 never misses his mark. Neither do you, Miss Burnwood. That's what makes you valuable. You're delusional. You think I would betray 47? Trust me. You owe him nothing. What is this? I told you we could help each other. And I meant it. I look forward to your call. Gray is gone. Go to Berlin and stay out of sight. We're all that's left now. been compromised. Abort and walk away now. Who? ICA. They tracked me. Don't know how. It's what they do. How many? One prime asset and a whole pack of up-and-comers. They've infiltrated the club searching for us. Chris, I think I killed one of them. Get out now before they spot you. No. They found us once. They'll find us again. <sighs> Keep your head down. I'll take care of this. Quiet out here, no sign of him. Agent Price. This is like looking for a needle in a haystack. Just keep trying, Agent Montgomery. Our client considers Agent 47 and Olivia Hall as a serious threat. You can't underestimate them. I never do, Joe. We'll find them. We're all in position. Good. Report back to me if there's anything. Don't worry.
Not a thing. That worries me. Right, I'm like, you'll be fine. Always do. It's Ralph. I've given it some thought. Let's talk. About time. Sit down and make yourself comfortable. I'm on my way. Careful, Montgomery. That's not Hirschwiller. 47 must have taken him out. I know, but I'm intrigued how this plays out. I'm assuming you have a plan here, Montgomery. Only to eliminate the target. Don't just tell me what you think they want to hear. You need to lighten up a little. I need a status update. Patience, Chow. I'm still on my way. This is patience. Well, just lean back in your big, comfortable chair and wait. Let the big boys take care of this. You are a condescending moron. Okay, just get back to me when the job is done. or you'll get sloppy. And clearly, he's not making that mistake. Okay, entering here's Muller's office. Target is waiting. Now you know what to do. Some strange noises here. Looking into it. Over. isn't secure. Don't take any chances. Freeze him out. Damn it, he's gone! Got no eyes on tank. I'll flush him out. Let him rip! No visual, Kill him! One. We got no visual. Davenport. Control, how copy? He's nearby. Let's move. Agent Chamberlain. Alpha one actual. I've arrived at yeah, Enough! He got another! You're setting ducks. Evacuate the area immediately.
finally got my message. Where are you? Diner. Up the main road. On my way. You're hurt. You should see the other guy. Never killed nobody before. What you did back there. You really are all the Grey said you'd be. 47. He didn't suffer, did he? He made it count. but not broken. I'm glad. It's time we start afresh, you and me. Get to the point. You and your friends pulled off the impossible. You stormed the heavens, took down the untouchables, and yet, here we are. Status quo. It just goes to show, you can't fight power, Miss Burnwood. Power never dies, it only changes hands. The best you can do is claim it. I never cared about power. Power is a tool, Miss Burnwood. It's the thing that gets you to the thing. As the next constant, you can be the agent of change. Transform the system from the inside, or be transformed by it. No risk, no reward. I need to think about it. No, you won't. The real question is, what will you bring to the table? Chongqing, China. This city is Big Brother's wet dream with more than 2.5 million cameras covering 15 million people. Privacy is a four-letter word in this place. It's pretty ironic that a cloak and dagger organization like the ICA keeps its most valuable secrets here. You'll find Hush conducting his fringe experiment in an abandoned apartment building. While Imogen Royce, the archivist, runs the day-to-day -day business of the ICA data facility. Uh, have you seen a girl around? Uh, short hair with a bright green bag? Sorry. Shit. She says she'd meet me here. She's probably running away. Yeah. She used to be waiting for life. I'm gonna be rich. Get the hell out of here. I got this flyer, and it says I can make a lot of money to be in some experiment. They don't want people like us for that sort of thing. No, they only want people like us. The flyer says so. That means That's got Hush written all over it. Using the desperate for personal gain. Maybe this is a way for you to get to the bastard. Too dangerous for rich people. How's that leg healing up? Okay. I, I think I'm changing my mind. Oh. 
I'm ready to experiment. Oh, good. I'll let Cicely know to join us beneath. Experiment. say, Sister Lei? Should we start at signal strength 60%? He looks strong. Why not do 100? Yes, 100%. I feel strong. So, the test subject came to his senses, I see. Good. Sister Lei, yes. We're about to perform the final test of this project. One-on-one -on -one with Hush-47. Make him hurt. Log, continuing experiment H-109. Run calibration 100%. Signal strength 100% confirmed. H-109 initiated. Good. All good to go. Identify impulse strength. Load suggestion. Motor control. 44.1. Execute. We need to go higher. Quiet. I can't. Fuck! My head. You'll get nowhere like this. I don't understand. No one's ever resisted like this before. Let's increase the signal and get some results. What do you say, Bush? Do 120%. 120. Good. Continuing experiment, H109. Run calibration, 120%. H109 continue. 120% signal strength concern. Yes. This is it. It's all incredibly sharp. I feel my mind expanding. Identify impulse strength. Load suggestion. Motor control, 44.1. Execute. I... I feel... How? I'm not scared of you. I could... You got the bastard, Hush. Hush! Now go get Imogen Don't Royce and we can get to the core. Get
I'm Chen Di. Pleased to meet you. I'll be your guide at the facility floor. Spare me the pleasantries. I've had an awful flight. Nine hours delayed, luggage lost somewhere along the way, and the airline is trying to avoid their responsibility. I'm hungry and I'm tired, and I want to straighten everything out before I'm doing the order. Yeah. So, someone is here for a tour of the facility. Might be a way to get in. Oh, God, oh, I don't feel so good. Why am I supposed to focus when the kitchen feels like a Ready to inspect the facility now. Good. Close your eyes. Did you bring the P41 we left for you in the apartment? Yes. I have everything I need. Good. Let's continue the tour. Continue, you may say. We haven't even started the tour yet. But we have. Without you even noticing it, Mr. Pritchard, invisibility is the best security there is. The restaurant is, in fact, a front that lets all ICA personnel arrive unseen. Who notices a dumpling cook on his way to work? Dressing the part takes you a long way. ICA guarantees absolute discretion to all clients. We take that promise very seriously, as you will see on all steps of the tour. Let's step inside. Doesn't look like much, does it? Ms. Chen and visitor, welcome. Please report to security desk for visitor sign-in. Will do. I love the facility AI. It's really looking out for us. And we're in. The inside is a self-contained modular bill that can be disassembled and removed in less than 12 hours if we are compromised. No trace we will ever hear. I agree. Leaving no trace behind is the only sensible MO. The outside shell is a building marked for demolition. We've put a hold on it with city planning. A deliberate misplacement of the order but have people in place to rectify that. At first shift, city construction will move in. Hey, it's me. Our policy around ICA personnel is that they are a resource, but also a risk. On top of contractual repercussions if breaches occur, we perform detailed vetting on everyone. 
the first okay. blunt Thanks. vetting is a frisk. We have, of Be course, tight. never had any employees trying to bring unauthorized weapons inside the facility, but we do consider the step important. I'll need to start the setup of your visitor security clearance here, Mr. Pritchard. Watch out for those I need your P41 to start the clearance this procedure. So Thanks. I'll get the procedure started. It'll just be a few moments, so feel free to have a look around. I'll meet you on the other side of the frisk. Naturally, you'll have to be frisked like everyone else. No exceptions, Mr. Pritchard. Hey, how you doing? If you want to get past me, I have to frisk you first. That's not open for discussion. Yeah, it feels good, huh? Yeah, I bet it does there, cue ball. Thank you. Here's the B41. Please start the authentication process for top security clearance and engage the zero protocol. VIP. I'll get right on it. Good, you're here. I've started the security clearance process. It will take a little while since you're covered by the Zero Protocol. All your data will be encrypted and inaccessible without your authorization. Only Facility AI will use it for ID analysis. Fully anonymized, of course. But we can go a few more steps on the tour while it's validating. ID analysis? What the hell does that mean? Give me a minute. I'll try to find out. As I said, personnel is the greatest asset, but also the greatest risk of the ICA. The work we do here exerts high-level pressure on our employees, and there is no room for mistakes. We perform a daily, multi-layered, full-body scan to guarantee that no employee will act erratically because of PTSD or other mental issues, drug use, physical health issues, external pressure, or moral hesitancy. The scan only takes a few seconds. Come on, it's this way inside. I'm sorry, but we can't proceed beyond this room until your security clearance is finalized. So why don't you have a little look around while we wait, Mr. Pritchard? It should be here shortly. Shit. We need to intercept that 47, or the facility AI will blow your cover. Get me into one of those computers and do it fast. Access You've got 60 locked. seconds before all hell breaks loose. Good, I'm in. And you're safe. That was a close one. Perfect timing. Your clearance just came through. Let's continue. Let's step inside. So, as you see, we are very serious about security. What we protect is, after all, core to all ICA operation. We, and we alone, store all legal work, contracts, target profiles, employee files, contract documentation and validation, and so forth. Furthermore, we handle all current operations, effectuate logistics or personnel and equipment. Our analysts do the client vetting, target profiles, and of course, offer real-time contract support to handlers and operatives. Storage and transmission of sensitive information like that takes constant vigilance to keep safe. We have a team of engineers solely dedicated to that task, and on- Oh, good. There she is. Hi, Imogen Royce. I've been looking forward to meeting you. Likewise. After you. This is the BLAST and EMP shielded call room, the nervous system of the ICA, where we store the past and facilitate the present. In general, only a handful of people can access this room. Hush and myself, plus bodyguards and a chosen few of the engineers. 
I'm the most likely person to meet in here because I perform a regular physical check-in on the core console as a supplement to the remote authentication procedure. We have a strict routine of daily core maintenance. Part of that procedure is a flash process evaporating all biological matter in the room. You can see Reed through that window. It's her job to initiate the maintenance. Don't worry, we're safe as long as the safety mechanism is engaged. Even if Reed presses the button, the procedure will not happen until we leave the core room. The doors to the core room are all equipped with... <sighs> you know what, screw this tour. I know why you're really here. Cunning to the chase, I see. Knowledge is power. More importantly, knowledge is opportunity. Let me demonstrate. You have a sixth sense for irregularities. And although Hush's recent behavior has not been reported, it has no doubt brought you here. You do have authority to shut down unwanted efforts, but at heart you are progressive and not the stickler everyone thinks you are. You have sway with the board, and as I see it, your opinion is now what decides my future and the future of the ICA. So here we go. Imagine this. Having a time schedule on a target with minute details on locations, durations, and purpose. A detailed layout of a target's actions within a defined time frame. That would transform a contract into a surgical dance of precision. No mess, no fuss, low cost. Just how I like it. I've been working on a prediction algorithm based on a combination of big data analysis and micro-targeted surveillance of defining target markers and my results are astounding. All this state of the art is nothing but heavy old fashioned machinery compared to what I offer. Analysts preparing detailed files, dedicating days, weeks to prepare our contracts, gone. Handlers and analysts supporting our operatives during missions, gone. Teams for cleanup and media manipulation in the rare case something unforeseen does happen, all of it, gone. I asked you to imagine that scenario. But what good is imagination when you can see it with your own eyes? I've set up a little demonstration for you. Looking good, man. Looking Three employees good. unaware that I can accurately predict their behavior. Firing them will result in an already clearly defined reaction. On the top left, we have Sharon Reed, who you saw downstairs. She is a dutiful and trusted employee. If she is to be fired, my algorithm predicts with a certainty of 97.8% that she will finish up her most important tasks before she leaves the building. Specifically, she will press the maintenance button within 11 seconds. Jeremy Bolt. The guard in the lower left is as tough as nails when on duty, but in private, he's a real mummy's boy. If fired, he will immediately call his mother and at her advice, seek out who he considers his best friend for support. My personal guard, as it stands. Me? Really? Well, that explains why he's always next to me at lunch. At the top right, you see Alicia Reynolds. Bright and very passionate about her job. However, also very possessive about her contribution. My prediction is that she will try to disable the work she has done for the ICA. If she's not allowed to enjoy her results, no one is. Specifically, that means she will try to enter the core room and disable the safety mechanism. I'll leave you to consider your choice of who you want me to use for the demonstration. Just let the guard outside the door know when you're ready, and I'll be right. Right back. I will have a closer look. Maybe your project could play a part in the future of the ICA. Just let the guard outside the door know when you're ready, and I'll be right back. Oh, and if you decide to leave the room, a guard will escort you around. Safety protocol. Thought I'd just mention it. She really takes the term guard complex to a whole new level. Sitting in there pulling the strings like that. I think you should take her setup and give it a spin, 47. I see potential if you time it right. Alicia Reynolds, I regret to inform you that Code 41 is now effective for your employment status. Thank you for your service. Oh no you don't. Not now. I will not accept this. There's... Jeremy Bolt, 
I regret to inform you that Code 41 is now effective for your employment status. Thank you for your service. What? That can't be right. Code 41 is confirmed effective for your employment status. Oh, God. This is not good. This is not good. I thought it was going really well. I like it here. I can't believe it. But who, though? Friend. Oh, you mean Vincent? Yeah. Now go see him. Okay, I'll call you later. Sharon Reed. I regret to inform you that Code 41 is now effective for your employment status. Thank you for your service. Good. That's both targets down. I just need to override this, and I'm in. You can get out now, and I can take care of the data remotely. Unless you want to handle it yourself. There's no way you're getting through that door 47. It only opens for people with an authentic security clearance. The signal is encrypted. Without a dongle, we can't hack it. Sealing the room and dimming the windows 47. No need to worry about intruders. It's all here. Clients, operatives, every hit the ICA ever sanctioned. Enough to shut them down for good. But first, you need to locate all files referencing Diana and yourself. why you want to protect her. So, wipe all the data referring to the two of you from their system before we publish the rest. 
Okay, good. I've set up a link to an information non-profit site. When you press that button, it's up there and the whole world will know. There's no undo 47. This will shut the ICA down for good. You really okay with this? It's who you've been for so long. Maybe it's time for a change. I'll just return things to normal. No need to alert them we were here prematurely. Safety switch to save the detective. Shit! I missed that. We're blown 47. I can hold the doors for a little while. Use the fence to get out. Go! Now! All personnel. Breach protocol initiated. This is bad. That means they'll shoot on sight. I'm gonna create some havoc, 47. Make the core melt down. Maybe we'll divert their attention a bit. Warning. Core overheating. Warning. Core shut down. Temperature critical. Warning. Fire detected. Personnel, breach protocol initiated. Warning, core overheating. shell causing shockwaves across the world, the so-called ICA files, the disclosure of a... You win. So, what happens now? The ball's in your court, Miss Burnwood. I do have other candidates, you know, most of whom have never tied me to a chair. You've seen the news. That was 47 acting on his own. He is untethered. He is unstoppable, and he cannot be bargained with. He will find you, Mr. Edwards, and I'm the only chance you've got. I'm listening. 47 has one weakness. Me. something. Buenos Aires International Airport this morning. Now watch this. Heralds. Trail ends at the airport, but turns out that a top Providence operative owns a vineyard in the area. Don Yates, of infamous New York law firm Morgan Yates & Cohen. And get this, it's hosting his retirement party today. She's infiltrated them. She's sending a message. She needs my help. Could have fooled me. You don't know her. Anyway, 
If you're going after her, you'll need to deal with the Herald. Her name's Tamara Vidal, former CIA asset and political firebrand. She's a master of surveillance and the Constance's most trusted aide. She'll have eyes everywhere. You won't get far as long as she's in the game. Why are you telling me this? I thought you were out. Yeah. Old habits, I guess. Anyway, I... I need to go. See you around, 47. No, you won't. likes his little games. Don't be long. You got my message. You'd never get caught on camera. Not unless you wanted to be seen. So what's the play? You're not the only one who's been busy, 47. I'm this close to becoming the next constant. I'll be able to dismantle Providence from the inside. Only one man stands in my way. Don Yates. That weasel was the partner's legal counsel for years. He's the top candidate. But remove him from the playing field. It won't work. If Edward suspects... I will convince him you acted alone. Retaliation for Grey. Trust me, I know what I'm doing. The Herald, Tamara Vidal. She has eyes everywhere, and they're all fixed on you. The plan won't work unless we take her out. She never leaves my sight for long. Whatever your plan is, I'll help you if I can. You're sure about this? As sure as I'll ever be. Here, I got you an invitation, just like old times. Come find me when it's done. Good luck, 47. two decades, New York-based law firm Morgan... Oh, cut, Neil. What's this yeah, asshole? Okay. Jeez, can you believe these people? Ugh, think the whole world is their playground. Don't let them get to you, Pam. Let's just take it from the top. Fine, you're right. For more than two decades, Mr. Yates? It's Aaron, sir, fr from the firm. I came as quickly as I could. Yes, sir, I have the files. Sorry it took so long, but I had to access our remote server to print everything, and I, I couldn't get my VPN to... Right. Sorry, sir. I'll be right inside. Oh, my lord. You seem nervous. You got something to hide? Okay, man. Vamos.
Aaron Ford Jr. Don Yates is expecting me. Okay, right this way, Mr. Ford. Why would Mr. Yates waste his time on a bunch of low-level bureaucrats? Even if they all wear the same... You look like a lawyer, all right. You got that killer instinct. It's a gift. You can set up your shop in here. Mr. Yates will be right with you. Excuse me, I found this. I I'm sure you... Highly oh. suspicious, but the ah, pregunta come is... On. What are you oh, going to do about this, senor? All right, stay put. Uh, what I found this lying around and couldn't just leave it there. So I thought I'd bring it to you. Oh, Mr. Yates, yeah, I come have your files on. right here. About time. You can set up shop in the ground floor guest room. I'll be right with you. Clock, Aaron, dazzle me. What do we got on Burnwood? She's an orphan. Parents killed by one of our clients, Blue Seed Pharmaceuticals. The experience taught her to seek justice outside the system. Would you like me to go through her records? They're quite extensive. Well, somebody did their homework. No, just her involvement in the 1% killings. Starting with our clients. Details, please. The gorier, the better. Well, here's one that might interest you. Janus, a retired KGB spy master, is eliminated in his adopted hometown of Whittleton Creek, Vermont. Let me guess, the Burnwood woman. 
That's right. Gates has arranged for the chief winemaker to take Burnwood and Tamara Vidal on a grand tour of the estate. I won't see the tag along. Not for my sparkling personality. This Burnwood woman sure has his panties in a twist. Wonder what the deal is. Yates' business is his business. Just get yourself ready and sign into the visitor center. Oh, have a drink on my behalf. I don't drink. It makes me sentimental. more of a fear. Hello there. Hello there, and welcome to the Yates Winery. How may I help you? Corval Black. I'm on the tour. Right. Mr. Black, welcome. Miss Burnwood and Miss Vidal will meet you down by the wine fields. I trust you know the way. I can find my way around. Enjoy the tour. One of the most gifted surveillance specialists ever to graduate from Kent. Ran one of our interrogation plans. Over here. You two must be Burnwood and Vidal. And you must be Yates's garbage man. Sorry, but I didn't catch your name. This is Corvo Black, Tamara. He's a ICA regular. I only work with the best. Well, we're all here, it seems. Except for our guide, the chief winemaker. Looks like we're stuck here until someone fetches him. Mr. Black, I'm looking in your direction. Hold on. I'll track him down. That a boy. We try and bring him back in one thing. What? What is he now? What? You have some guests waiting. Senor Yates wanted you to give them grand tour. Remember? If I don't have more important things to do than babysit Yates, socialize friends. It's only harvest season. Better do what he says, Patron. Big shot New York lawyer like that. He don't want to get on his bad side. Well, I'm not going anywhere until I have decided if the crop is right. Bring me the three Malbec grapes. Yates doesn't like how I prioritize. He can weigh me down with concrete. And toss me off a bridge. How's that? Um, three grapes, was it? I'll get my picking knife. Uh, 
Come on. Mr. Hola, Vargas, I have the three grapes you requested. Yes, good. Bring him here. Now, let's see. A lovely inky black color. It's nice, large and firm. Seeds, brown. Excellent. And finally, taste. Sweet, flavorful, robust tannins. Some floral notes. Harvest. Why, I say these grapes are ripe for harvest. Inform the workers, would you, Ramon? I have a third to come Will do. Hello, wine lovers. Hello! Welcome to Viñeda Yates. I do apologize for the delay. The Malbec grape is a demanding mistress. So, I am Gabriel Vargas, chief wine maker, and I will be your tour guide. Any questions before we start? Yes, but you're not going to like them. I, uh... We're good. Lead the way, Senor Vargas. Wonderful. Follow me. These are busy times. In fact, we're just about to harvest this year's crop. Great expectations. So, how do you like Argentina? Mm. Like everywhere else. Full of Americans. First stop on the tour is the production floor, where our prize-winning Malbec grapes are processed. We insist on steaming every grape by hand, which means that during harvest season, the grapes do tend to pile up. Luckily, we have plenty of storage space. Our equipment is state-of-the-art, including an industrial-sized freezer unit, and last but not least, a trusty grape crusher. Interesting. Wouldn't you say, Mr. Black? Follow me, please. Are you a wine man, Black? Somehow you don't seem the type. Oh, I believe Mr. Black here is something of a jack-of-all-trades. Isn't that so? I dabble. I see. I just thought Yates might be sending a message. My mistake. So, have any of you been to our vineyard before? Only on business. Next on our tour is the fermentation atrium, where the wine goes through its primary stage of fermentation. In these big open tanks, 
yeast converts the sugars into wine to alcohol in a process that lasts between 5 and 15 days. This is also where we squeeze the mass into a fine juice using our grape presser before the longer secondary stage of fermentation. Fascinating. Now, before we move on, do any of you have questions? I have a question. It's... perhaps we can take a closer look. Certainly. Lead the way. What can you tell me about this freezer? This is an industrial cold storage unit where we keep our excess grapes stocked to prevent decay. It easily reaches temperatures of minus 10 degrees Celsius. Trust me, you don't want to stay in here for long. No kidding. Hey, there's no doorknob on the inside. It seems like a pretty glaring safety omission if you ask me. Probably soundproof too. And good luck getting a phone signal. Such imaginations you have. But there really is no need to worry. Why? We haven't had an accident since Mrs. Yates' dog was run over by a great picker. Anything else you wish to know? I got all I need. Are you enjoying yourself, Mrs. Black? Oh, it's all very inspiring. One making is a grand pursuit. Sure, sure. Everyone talks about crime. Let's continue to the barrel. Follow me. you today, sir? <laughs> well, the doubt is nothing. There's no need to flex. You ain't gonna impress me.
just to be near the Yates. May I see your invitation, please? Gracias, senor. Enjoy the party. Looking good, man. Looking good. Evening, senor. Would you care for an aperitif? strike at the heart. Edwards. You know how to find him, don't you? Why, Edwards finds you, 47. He is untraceable, and he never lets you forget it. He is cocky, and that will be his downfall. What's the plan? Too many eyes. Meet me at the Olive Grove at sunset. One last tango, 47. How did you know? Your deal. That kind of power always comes with a price. What's yours? I think you know. I am sorry. This is a necessary evil. What have you done? Eat the brand's neurotoxin, transfers by touch. See, Edwards learns by his mistakes, 47. And as you've clearly demonstrated, brute force is futile. It had to be me. It was the only way. To get this close. My family. I know what you did. After all these years, I finally know. I am sorry. You didn't have a choice. I did. Providence used you, but I'm no better. All I saw was a blank slate, a weapon to wield. I told myself it was what you needed, but people aren't meant to be controlled. This is a kindness. Goodbye, Agent. Are you still here? Still clinging on to your self-image? Agent 47, the Apex Predator. Always hiding behind the headlines. Was perfection its own justification? Or a willful distraction? A wall built contract by contract to shield you from the uncomfortable truth? You're exactly the tool they bred you to be. Quite a piece of work you are. 
How could you possibly function on your own? You never even had a name. Until I gave you one. That's him. Burnwood never ceases to surprise me. You really are a most singular individual. And to think she wanted me to put you down. Lucky for you, I never throw away anything useful. Prepare the serum. Forgetting's not so bad. You've done it before. What's he doing? Is he still looking at us? I'm afraid so. Poor Sap just won't accept his days are done. Perhaps I should take him out to the woods and set him free. Oh, it's a classic. <laughs> he was a loyal tool. But everything goes the way of the horse and cart eventually. I couldn't agree more. Are you done? The toxins are playing into your fears. Don't let them. Come on. Got to get your head straight. She wants me dead. She has every right to after what we did. But that's not what is really going on. She chose power. In the end, she was just like them. No. She found a way to turn Edward's own cleverness against him. The rest is up to you. I don't know how. You do know. Diana! Coming! Once you dispose of Edward's, I will dismantle Providence from the top down. It will finally be over. All you have to do is embrace the past. Sir, we have produced a fresh sample of the serum. Yeah, the exact specs from the lab in Johannesburg. A dosage is on its way to your car as requested. Well, I recommend that the muscle paralyzing agent used to incapacitate the subject is out of his system before the serum is administered to avoid unwanted side effects. Yes, sir. I will inform you once the subject comes to. name for it for when we go commercial I mean figure this thing has commercial applications who'd want to have their mind it's wiped not wiped obviously but that's just fine-tuning okay right now the serum erases long and short-term memory banks wholesale but in a couple of cycles we'll be able to isolate the effect <laughs>
saw weather like this, I was doing extreme conditions training with the Army base in Pat.
Everything's on rails. Now move aside. I have a message from the boss. Yeah? Prisoner awake yet? Oh, he's up and about. Join me in the real world. I trust you already know what this is. Why not simply take it? Embrace who you were always meant to be. No, never again. <sighs> well, I had to try. Go on then. Do your thing. At least I die knowing who I am. talking about don't worry we were done International finance continues as Milton Fitzpatrick, CEO Alexander Fannin, joins the president of Townsend Oil. One new founder's plan and a bunch of other things shut down. Milton Fitzpatrick, CEO Alexander Fannin, joins the president of Townsend That's not who I am anymore. The pact is done. The past. Death. And yet, 
Here you are. I choose this path because I can. There will always be people like them. So there will always be people like us. No one is untouchable. It's good to be back.